Hey guys, welcome back to Beardman Comics. In this episode of Nail It with Beardman, I'll start by making confession that my artworks are very much inspired by Quentin Tarantino movies, not from those over the top violent scenes per se, which are hilarious and true to be told a treat to my eyes, but instead I get inspired by the calmness in the environment which stays unnaturally normal despite all the crimes that's been happening in the vicinity, which is crazy. And as you already know, I love crazy. So, I'm particularly interested in the Wild Wild West, the California in the 60s. Though this hilarious scene is set in a different timeline and in a daylight, I would take the liberty to try to draw the serene version of it from a spectator's point of view. And you know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh man, they got the metric system. What the f a quarter pounder is? And what do they call it? They call it the Royale with cheese. Let's start with the background first. I decide to make this one a little towards oversaturated this time. So I start with brighter colors to paint the sky. But something's not right though. I am not able to concentrate fully. Yes, you guessed it right. It's the bottom half that's distracting me. Let me take care of that. I'll trust the sharpest tool in the room to slice the scalp of the buildings, just like Hattori Hanzo's katana sword. Kill Bill fans, rejoice with me. Alright, I seem to have found the momentum, so after browsing through some sunsets on my 6.1 inch handheld window, I proceed to draw the clouds. One thing about clouds is that they need to be random, and one thing about the artist's skill set is that the randomness is quite difficult to achieve. So I put some blotches while I try my best to be as arbitrary as possible. For the colors, I used the same trick I discussed in the previous video, where I had used warmer highlights and colder shadows. The contrast it rendered was mind-blowing. The trick to paint amazing clouds is observation. Actually, the trick to draw anything better is observation. As you can see here, the sun is almost in the verge of setting. That's why the lower half of the sky is the brightest. And as the light primarily behaves, it will reflect itself in every single cloud. So I simply brighten the area facing the sunlight keeping in mind that the colors of the clouds are not as saturated as the sky. And at this point, I shall stop. I am certain that another brushstroke will only do harm to it. So I proceed to do some urban planning, despite of getting into a college even after trying for years. Anyway, after I have brushed rough textures and little details to the path of the righteous man as quoted by Samuel L. Jackson, I move on to the only prominent structure here, the motel. Perhaps the same one where Bruce Willis has gone on to hiding. Maybe. Regardless, to make the scene more realistic, regular elements play a huge role, such as some windows on the motel, bushes, an electric pole, a motel sign of course, and a car. I mean, cars. A lot of them. I can actually bet that I have drawn more cars in my lifetime than the real ones in Vatican City. Of course, this one counts as well. You don't need to go for the details every time. It's only the emotion that matters. And the distance also matters. The further you go towards the horizon, the details get significantly fewer, until they converge into tiny red dots, such as these, and of course the headlights on the other side of the road. Now it's time to light up the city. As the backdrop is already very dark, these tiny, slightly oversaturated droplets will mimic the distant windows. Not these giant white boxes though, they are subject to interpretation. Once I have brightened the road, followed by a second coat of texture and minute details, I move on to draw the power lines with utmost simplicity. I even drew the wires I promise, but they are hardly visible. Having said that, we are done with the background. That undone part looks hideous though, let's fill it up by applying some base coat. By now you must have known how much I love these rustic retro cars. I find them so charming that they inevitably end up in most of my artworks. Appreciate my eye for details, even the tinier ones are one of them. Speaking about the cars, let's get back to this one. I spray a coat of primer over the base layer before I start painting. The primer doesn't let the paint to chip off. Another cheap tactic of mine to hide the fact that I am terrible at choosing colors. Anyway, let me show you how to paint the car. As we all know, these metallic panels are very reflective in nature. A shiny car will reflect everything in its surrounding. If you look closely, I am just trying to paint what the different surfaces of the car are facing. As you can see here, the panels such as the roof, trunk, even the wheel arches reflect the sky, while the surfaces such as the bottom half of the door reflects the road. Mmm, it looks more like a spaceship, but a retro spaceship. Now it's time to go further with the details. These tiny white dots reflect the headlamps and the street lights on the road, followed by a gentle brushing of a lighter tone on the rear windshield. 
I plan to make the rear panel dark so that the oh the iPad needs some juice. All right. Well, I don't recommend using the iPad while it's getting charged, but desperate times, right? I use a bright red color for the tail lamp, which pops out more because the rear panel is darker in color. Followed by a huge dollop of chrome everywhere to claim the 80s charm. And after attaching a round rear view mirror with a chrome ring to top it off, it is done. Oh wait, I missed the final touch. To make the car relevant for the road, I quickly cast a few beam of lights before it is done. The sky could have looked much better, but I am certain that it would be way less intimidating the next time I paint the clouds. And I can assure you that there will be a lot of dynamic skyscapes on my future artworks. I really loved how the road turned out, thanks to the texture and especially the overlay of the vehicular lights. I am even very satisfied with the details on the motel and the tiny things that surrounding it. The city looks meh to me. I have drawn much better cityscapes in my past artwork, so I'll give it about six out of ten. Now it's time to talk about the cars. All I can say is that I have done justice here. The chrome looks like chrome, the steel looks like steel, and the glass looks like a glass, I guess. And I really love how this beam of light ended up on the road. I was afraid that this artwork would be too oversaturated, but surprisingly, the colors didn't disappoint. Thanks to the unusual perspective, this piece looks more interesting. So interesting that it ended up winning the Ugly Creative contest hosted by Bryce Richard, the creator of Ugly Sweater. Amazing guy. And as it was a maiden victory, this artwork will always be special to me. Thanks for watching. I think we should be leaving now. Yeah, that's probably a good idea.